Let's talk about paper mache today. The first thing you will need is an armature, and your armature is just the skeleton for your sculpture. So it's the stuff that's gonna hold all your paste. I'm using a combination of newspaper and cardboard. You can also use plastic containers. Um, but the other thing you're probably going to need is masking tape. So I've got my name in class on part of it already. I've already started with a ball of paper that I actually paper mache earlier, so I'll show you this step again. I'm making a little bear. So this is gonna be the neck. So I've crumpled up a ball of paper. I'm gonna wrap this up. The more layers you do right now, the stronger that your project will be. The nice thing about newspaper is it's very easy to fold and twist and bend and wrap. So let's talk about taping neck. So I've got my neck already and I actually cut part of it off so you can see that it's just a bunch of paper wrapped up inside there. All I've used for this is newspaper so far. And now I'm gonna use some pieces of masking tape to help hold this together. So while I'm taping it, I'm gonna also kind of pinch it and hold it to make that wrapped nice and tight. I've got one ear cut out, here's my other ear. One suggestion I have, sometimes it helps to tear your tape in half so that you have smaller pieces. So I'm gonna tape this other ear on. I'm gonna use the bracing technique that's from the cardboard center. That's where I make like an L shape with my tape. And I'm gonna do that on the front and on the back. So I smooth and then I smooth. Now if I do the wiggle test, those don't fall off. So you should wiggle your project. If it falls apart, you know you're going to need a little more tape. Now comes the next part. I'm gonna tape my project together and tape it to this base. So again, I'm gonna use the L base, L brace, excuse me. That's where I put part of it on the cardboard, part of it on the newspaper. And I'm gonna do that in a couple spots. This way I know it's not gonna start falling apart when I start adding paste. Then I'm gonna attach these two together using the same technique, that L brace. And if you get frustrated with this, have a partner help you hold it while you tape or have a partner help you tape or flag down Mrs. Hayes. I'm always happy to help too. Again, do the shake test. Mine's a little loose, so I'll probably add a little bit more tape before I start pasting it. Okay, so I've done one last shake test and it's not falling apart. Now I have my paste. They're in containers in the paper mache center. I've also got some paper towels and I've also got newspaper underneath my workspace. This is going to make cleanup faster and I have some strips of newspaper. I don't recommend using the shiny newspaper. It doesn't stick as well. So use the stuff that's not shiny. I also recommend that your pieces of paper are about the size of your thumb. Now, if you're doing a bigger project, you can make them a little bit bigger, but things that are bigger than your thumb are kind of hard to control. So I like to tear them in half and make them a little shorter. And I like to have a variety. That means a few different sizes. So I might have some that are a little bit longer. I might have some a little thicker and I might have some a little smaller. The next thing we're going to do, this is the method I like most. I put a little bit of paste on my fingers and I just get the entire piece of paper wet. You can see it's not dripping. Nothing is coming off my strip of paper. And I'm gonna start smoothing these over my project. Smoothing is important. It's gonna help hold everything together. And then when you're ready to add paint, it's gonna make it easier to paint too. So again, I add a little paste. I make sure the entire piece of paper has paste on it. It's not dripping. And I'm gonna start wrapping and adding these to my project. You're gonna cover the entire project, all the tape. If you don't cover your tape, if the tape gets wet, it's just gonna start peeling and falling off and your project's gonna fall apart. So I'm gonna actually focus on covering all of my masking tape before I do anything else. So I'm also doing L bracing with my paper mache strips. So I'm smoothing. You can see I'm also overlapping. All right, when you're done or when it's time to clean up, you can get a clothespin and a piece of paper with your name and class on it and just clip it to your project because as you can see on the back, I have covered up my name. 
And this is gonna go on one of the 3D storage shelves for the sculptures. Please don't put your work on top of anyone else's. It's wet, it will stick to other people's. Put the lid on the paste. First, make sure there's no chunks of paste in there. If there are, pull them out, throw them in the trash. This goes back with the paste containers. Any little scraps like this can go in the garbage. Any wet newspaper should also go in the garbage. So all of this gets thrown out. If you have any dry paper that's still usable, please fold it and stack it neatly. Put it back with the newspaper. You should not have had scissors out because if we get paste on these, they get rusty and gooey. So please make sure these were not being used for paste. If they were, it's your job to wipe them clean. Then your workspace, you're gonna wipe it. Use a wet paper towel, please. It should not be dripping. There's no water coming off my paper towel. Wipe your entire workspace. Any little chunks like this can go in the garbage. Then go get a dry paper towel. Dry up any puddles. Return any other tools. When you're done cleaning up, follow the end of class directions.